the energy of April is going to feel like a roller coaster ride. As we walk into the month, it is like sitting in our seat. We know something exciting is about to happen, but we don't know exactly what yet. As we move to that total solar eclipse, we are going up the hill. Our hands are off the wheel. Something big, palpable is about to happen. Then we move from the eclipse to the lottery aspect. That is going down the slope with exhilaration, with excitement. Every twist and turn comes with a new surprise. After the lottery aspect, that is us coasting back to the terminal. Mercury comes out of retrograde, Mars and Venus go back to their home sign, and we end the ride the month of April with clarity, peace, and direction. And Welcome back, Astro Fam. We are diving in today to the astrology of April 2024. We have so much to discuss, lots of exciting energy. I'm here to help you navigate all of it, of course, from the lens of having the best relationships possible. So you want to go ahead and grab your birth chart, your calendar, a pen and paper to take notes. And of course, if you have your 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal, make sure you have that handy because we're going to talk about some of the aspects I mentioned in this journal. Now, I also want to say today might be a long video and there's a lot of energy each planet is up to a lot of stuff this month. So I want you to pay special attention to your primary life coach, especially when I get to the planet by planet breakdown. I want you to really zoom in and pay special attention to your primary life coach. What does this mean? Depending on your rising sign, you have one planet that makes the most impact on you on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm going to go through that really quick by pulling it up here. If you are an Aries rising, pay attention to Mars. Taurus, you're going to pay attention to Venus. Gemini, pay attention to Mercury. Cancer, you are ruled by the moon, which can be challenging to navigate since it moves very fast. So pay special attention to the new and the full moon and come back to my channel and watch the in-depth full videos for the new moon in Aries and the full moon in Scorpio. Leo risings, you're going to pay attention to the sun. The sun seasons impact you very heavily. Virgo risings, you are ruled by Mercury. Pay attention to what Mercury is up to this month. We know it's a Mercury retrograde. Libra risings, you're going to pay attention to Venus. Scorpio risings, pay attention to Mars, but also keep a side eye on Pluto. Sagittarius risings, you're going to pay attention to Jupiter. Capricorn risings, pay attention to Saturn. Aquarius risings, also pay attention to Saturn and Uranus. My Pisces risings, you're going to pay attention to Jupiter and Neptune. Now, if you're new to my videos, I'm going to break down how the monthly forecasts go. There's timestamps listed in the description box. You can skip around to wherever you need to go. Also, remembering that I am a tropical Western astrologer using whole sign systems. Now, first, we're going to go over the overview, the energy or the story of the month of April. So you have that zoomed out 30,000 feet perspective. Then we're going to dive into my top five transits of the month, the top five things that are happening out of all the things that are happening in April. And let me tell you, there's a lot happening in April. The top five I'm keeping an eye on that I know will have the most impact on us personally and collectively. Then we will move into the planet by planet breakdown. That's where you want to pay attention to your primary life coach. If you have your birth chart, you also want to get that out because I will be giving you the degree points that each planet will be transiting. And you can see if that is impacting anything specifically within your chart. Now, remember, I consider each planet a life coach. And so as they're moving through the sky, they are teaching us different lessons. We will dive into that during the planet by planet breakdown. After that, get your calendar out because we will dive into the date by date breakdown. This will help you navigate the month ahead because if you have anything on your calendar, something special going on at work, a birthday maybe, maybe a family event that's planned, and you notice that there's a cosmic weather event happening on that date, you can best prepare or anticipate the energy you may be feeling for that date for that event. So make sure you pay attention to the date by date breakdown. That's my part of the video that I call what's in the stars for the week ahead. And at the end of the video, we will go through the rising sign breakdowns where I will help you navigate the relationships in your life for the month of April. Specifically this month, we will be looking at what relationships with the Mercury retrograde will be a little wonky, maybe have some miscommunications or some fights. And we will also be looking at the lottery aspect in the zodiac energy of Taurus and what relationships in your life may have this unexpected surprise, breakthrough, revelation. So make sure you stick around for the rising sign forecast. So with all of that, let's go ahead, zoom out, do our overview, 30,000 foot view. What is the story? What is the energetic narrative of the month of April? Now, April truly is a month that can change our lives in a big way. And we may not notice it at first. It may be something so micro, so small, just a thought, just a conversation, just a small little step or action. But later on, we look back at the month of April and go, oh my gosh, that's when everything changed for me. So I want you to pay attention to that. I do not say that very lightly. We have some major transits 
happening this month that have not happened in a very long time. For example, the total solar eclipse. It is rare to have a total solar eclipse. And we have not had the cosmic energy of the North Node solar eclipses in Aries in 19 years. We also have not had a lottery aspect with Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct in 13 years. And they have not met up in the zodiac energy of Taurus since 1941. Then we have Mars coming back home to the zodiac energy of Aries. This has not happened in two years. And then we end the month with the full moon in Scorpio. And this is the first full moon in Scorpio that has not been an eclipse in three years. Those are some of just the macro things that are going on. But if you also take into account some of the micro transits, like Mars running into Saturn, Venus going into a square with Pluto, Chiron being involved with the eclipse, Mercury going retrograde in Aries. All these other things are also very unique. And the fact that they're all happening within the same month tells us a lot, tells us a big part of the story. So with the overview, let's look at some of the themes as all these planets are kind of doing their dance that is impacting us very heavily. We have Mercury retrograding in Aries, our mind on fire, speaking and expressing our truth, sharing our needs, wants, and desires with passion, with intensity, retrograding, going back over old old conversations, old contracts, looking at it from a lens of what's in my best interest. We have Venus and the zodiac energy of Aries. This is the warrior princess, the way that we are loving things, the way that we are desiring things. We're doing them with a purpose and intention of me, 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 what I want and desire for the first time in a very long time. And of course, this is going to be a month with Mercury retrograde where we have exes coming back into the picture, people from our past circling back around, people wanting to show up and share their needs, wants, and desires with you. So pay attention to this. We also have Venus, how we love, who we love, how we're expressing ourselves towards the things that we desire in the energy of Aries. This is warrior princess vibes. This is our feminine in a masculine energy going after the things that we want, that we love, fighting for the things that we truly desire. This is a, an intense energy. Now we also have Mars in Pisces. So this is our stamina, our chi, how we're moving forward, how we're making decisions, how we're acting in the energy of Pisces, which is our intuition, which is trust and having faith. This is moving a little slower. This is going with the flow. This is committing our actions to our spiritual practice of trusting the process, trusting truly the month ahead with all the other energies coming at us. Now, also we have the eclipses in Aries this month, lots of energy in Aries. So this is truly a month of learning to love ourselves, to put our own oxygen masks on, to step into our main character and to assess the things in our life that we love and value and hold dear. And if we don't find that they meet up to our standards or our criteria or the future we want to create, it's about learning to let go with love and peace and understanding. But truly what we value must be our priority. So that is kind of the gist of it. Now with that, I want to kind of move into the top five transits I have my eye on this month. Ones that I know that are going to be those highlight macro life-changing moments. So let's break that down. Now, the first transit I think is so important for us to honor and understand during the month of April is the fact that we have Mars in the zodiac energy of Pisces the entire month until April 30th. The final moments of the month of April, as we leave April and step into May, Mars will move home into the zodiac energy of Aries. That is when we actually act. That is when we actually make decisions. That's when we actually get into the left lane, hit the gas pedal because our windshield is clear. We have the map in front of us. We have the easiest, smoothest direction and the plan, and then we actually get going. But from the 1st of April to the 30th of April, as Mars is in Pisces, this is something we have to honor as we make decisions, as things come up in our lives and we have to act or respond. This is going to be an energy of responding slowly of waiting and having patience and trusting that if I don't act in this moment, it's not an emergency. It doesn't need to happen right now. And this is going to be so beautiful to practice. I invite you to practice this of your nervous system response. It feels like we get a phone call. It's an emergency. We get an email. It's an emergency. Someone needs an answer right now. 
I challenge you and invite you for the month of April to not allow that to be the case because something might come up on Monday, an email comes through and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to respond to it. That by Wednesday, it ends up being a non-issue. It didn't even need to be handled in the first place. So give things room to breathe. Go with the flow. Mars and Pisces the entire month is going to be about connecting and acting from a place of intuition, of going within. Now, also there's a lot of deep healing that's being called right? Because Mars is action, how we move forward, what we need to do right now. And Pisces is saying, heal, heal your spiritual beliefs, heal your mindset, heal your limiting beliefs, heal you being your own worst enemy, your own undoing, heal the emotional trauma that you are storing in your body. This is such a month for deep, deep energetic work, mental health work, and spiritual practices. Now I'm going to post on my TikTok page, a um, carousel of all the different spiritual practices that would be so beneficial for the Mars and Pisces a month ahead. Um, so go check that out. Out. I post a lot more short format content over there, giving you kind of the cliff notes, but here we're going into the deep dive. Now, also to understand as Mars moves through Pisces, he will run into Saturn. Where Saturn says, stop, I told you to slow down. I told you to reconsider. You don't have a clear map yet. You don't have the values that you really hold on and hold true for the rest of your life yet. Slow down, pause. I'm the crossing guard. Pull over, get in the right lane. This is like getting a flat tire on the highway after you've been hauling ass in the left lane. That's happening on the 11th of the month. Now on the 29th, Mars will run into Neptune in his final moments of Pisces before he runs home to Aries. And this is going to be a day where where you really want to dive into your spiritual practice. This is the power of visualization. This is that moment, the calm before the storm of like, all right, I have clarity. I see what I want in my mind's eye. I want to put it on my vision board and then I'm ready to start acting. I'm ready to start doing and getting it. So pay attention to your dreams around then. They might give you clarity on how you're going to move following the Mars-Neptune conjunction. Also, put your energy towards arts or creative projects. This is going to be a beautiful energy to take action on something you've wanted to paint or produce or a dance you want to create, or maybe it's something for work that you've been needing to put together in a creative way. Beautiful, beautiful energy for that. And then literally the final moments of the 30th, Mars is back in the left lane. We have so many answers from the Mercury retrograde. It is green light go. Be patient with yourself for the month of April with this transit. The second big transit of the month that I think is so important, and that is Mercury's retrograde. Of course, I have a complete separate video on the Mercury retrograde. I would encourage you to go watch that. We talk a lot about relationships because Mercury is the planet of communication, and communication is so important in relationships. And this time, Mercury is retrograding in Aries, which is about speaking up, sharing our truth, sharing our needs, sharing our wants, sharing our desires. And this can be very uncomfortable in relationships because it comes across as bold and intense, a way that we don't always communicate in relationships. And this Mercury retrograde is going to be forcing us to have those uncomfortable conversations, the ones that we've been sweeping under the rug, the ones that we're too scared to have. Aries brings courage and it brings this sense of, I have to say it out loud, this bravery. And so Mercury retrogrades are going to have you going back to old arguments, old traumas, old discussions, old things that have been left on the back burner and bringing them up to be healed because Mercury will be dealing with Chiron three times during his retrograde energy. I'm going to pull up the chart here of the Mercury retrograde. Like I said, I break this down so much more in my full in-depth video, so go watch that after this. But this chart shows you that Mercury is running into Venus, Chiron, the North Node, the Sun, lots of energies on his retrograde journey. So lots of stopping and pausing, reflecting, understanding, and most importantly, healing that is going to occur from this Mercury retrograde. Now with this Mercury retrograde, it's truly going to feel like our mind is on fire. The retrograde begins on April 1st. Yes, April Fool's Day. You want to be careful with your April Fool's jokes. People may not think they're funny at all. There is also this energy of Mercury being the trickster. Do not be surprised if when you wake up on April 1st, there are glitches in your technology. Someone says something to you that's totally out of left field. Like the whole day, your mind might just not be working. It's okay. Honor it. Now, now for the rest of the retrograde, the typical Mercury retrograde things are going to apply. So you want to back up your technology. If you're traveling, make sure you have backup documents. Um, 
communication and conversations. Just expect misunderstandings. Expect people to not understand what you're trying to convey. It's okay. Go to your astrology alchemy journal. Open up to the Mercury retrograde and Aries page where you'll see the do's, the don'ts, what to expect, and of course your journal prompts. Remembering the journal prompts you fill out three separate times. Once when the retrograde begins, April 1st. Once when the retrograde is halfway done, in this case, April 12th. And once when the retrograde is over on the 25th. You will see that your responses to these journal prompts will change as you're learning the lessons of the retrograde. So don't forget about that. Now, Mercury is the planet that is closest to us, right, on Earth. And so, of course, his retrogrades do impact us very heavily because the energy can be felt so deeply. So just honor this, understand it's a month, not necessarily to have a new conversation, to sign a new contract, to launch a new project. Just let the eclipses, the rearranging of the universe happen around you, give you clarity, go back over old things that need to be dealt with. And after on the 25th, you're going to have a different thought process, a different perspective, different information, more data points to move forward with after the retrograde is over. Now we will fully be in clear go mode by May 13th as Mercury is done with his shadow energy in Aries and Mars will also be home in Aries. So after May 13th, the energy is going to feel so different than the month of April. So talking about the eclipses, of course, the new moon total solar eclipse happening on April 8th is the third transit of the month that I know that is completely life-changing to us. Now, you've heard probably so much about this if you're into the astrology content. Even if you're not into astrology, I know you've probably heard of this total solar eclipse that's affecting almost all of North America in some way, in some fashion. Now, I want to talk about it a little energetically, and I'm going to keep it short because, of course, I have a complete separate video that breaks it all down, but I want to say that this is truly a relationship type of eclipse because it's paired with the previous eclipse, the full moon in Libra that we had on March 25th. These are the energies of relationships. The Aries, me, versus the Libra, we. And we are cutting away from Libra, the we, and what I need to give up in partnership in order to come back home to me, my dreams, my wants, my desires. And so this total blackout, this total eclipse can have us literally experiencing a new perspective, a new vision, a new desire, a new want in our lives that we then have to communicate to the we other people in our lives that will either cause them to respond positively or respond negatively and say, hey, you know what? Your need actually doesn't meet up with my new need that I had eclipsed into my life. And now what are we going to do about it? And so this is very, very big, very, very important to understand that these eclipses can truly change the way that you think feel and desire the people and the relationships around you. So go watch that other video I posted that breaks down that eclipse in a total relationship format. Now, the last thing I do want to remind you about that eclipse is it comes with a lot of healing energy because it will be exactly conjunct Chiron. So I'm going to pull up this chart here. You see the sun and the moon at 19 degrees and 24 minutes of Aries. And Chiron is also exactly at 19 degrees and 24 minutes. That is not a coincidence. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, anytime I see something in threes, I know that three is a holy sacred number in all religions and spiritual practices. So when I see something in astrology that represents a three triple conjunctions, a number is repeated multiple times, I know this is something we need to be paying attention to. So the fact that we have the sun, the moon, and Chiron all conjunct, all three planets at the same degree, we know something big is going to happen. And Chiron brings the healing. It soothes the wound. It brings us the information of what we need to do to move forward in a way that doesn't trigger us, that isn't traumatizing. So if there's relationships that have been in your life that need a deep cleanse, that need some healing energy infused into them, Chiron will bring this to us. And remember, Mars, the ruler of the new moon, the ruler of the total solar eclipse is in Pisces, the most beautiful placement that we can have to heal wounds in relationships, especially the one we have with ourselves, because sometimes we are our own worst enemy and we don't treat ourselves the way that we should treat ourselves. And sometimes we need to treat ourselves the way that we hope and wish other people would treat us. And so this total solar eclipse with the ruler in Pisces saying love, unconditional love, forgiveness, spiritual and energetic and emotional cleansing and purification so we can start new. We can start with fresh energy. 
fresh love infused into our relationships. So I hope that is eclipsed into your life. Again, I talk so much more about that in the other videos, but I want you to know that that is such a positive alignment that we can work with. And that is going to be life-changing for us in our relationships for the month of April. So then we move into the fourth major transit of April that is truly life-changing, and that is that lottery aspect. Now, when I say lottery aspect, it means that Uranus, the planet of rebellion, of liberation, of freedom, of moving us into the future, runs into the energy of Jupiter. Blessing, luck, expansion, growth, prosperity, flow, ease. And you put these two energies together and it truly can feel like we hit the lottery in some aspect of our life. Now, again, that's going to be dependent on your rising sign. So we'll get into that later. But this energy can feel shocking. It can feel sudden. It can feel unexpected. It can feel in the moment like, oh shit, my whole life's about to change because this thing happened in a moment. Lightning bolt flash. It is happening on the 20th of April. That doesn't mean for every single one of us, we're going to hit the lottery on that exact date. This energy is a process and it is getting closer and closer together as we move through the entire month of April with it becoming exact at 22 degrees of Taurus. So again, a repeating number, Jupiter at 22, Uranus at 22, 22, 22. Two, two is the number of couples, right? We, two partnerships, two people coming together. And so for all of us, there will be relationships in our life after we've spoken our truth, Mercury retrograde, after we've asked for our needs to be met, after we've gone back and had the tough conversation we took from under the rug out into the open, after we forgave, after we healed, after we reset, after we totally eclipsed out things that don't serve us anymore, then the lottery aspect can bless us as we move forward into our future with Uranus in a sudden unexpected way that we didn't know was going to happen with the blessing and luck and prosperity of Jupiter behind it. Such a beautiful way. This aspect, like I said, has not happened in 13 years. It has not happened in Taurus since 1941. Beautiful, beautiful energy that can truly change our lives. And it might seem so micro in the moment that later turns out to be such a big deal. So pay attention to that energy. And the fifth thing that is so big for the month of April that can change our lives is the full moon in Scorpio. Now, we have not had a full moon in Scorpio like we will have this month that has not been an eclipse since 2021. In 2022, it was an eclipse. In 2023, it was eclipse. And now we get all the way back to 2024 and we go back to a regular scheduled program, full moon in the zodiac energy of Scorpio, not in his eclipse. So this is great news, especially for my Scorpio risings, Taurus risings, Leo and Aquarius risings, because that Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle the last couple years has truly rocked you. This will be a very positive alignment for not only you, but all of us, because Scorpio asks for transformation. It asks for healing. It asks for us to move and rearrange something in our lives for the betterment of our life. And the ruler is going to be Mars, which is a very interesting fun fact for the month of April, is that Mars rules the new moon, total solar eclipse, and Mars rules the full moon in Scorpio. And again, we already talked about it. Mars is in Pisces, asking for healing, trust and faith in the universe, acting from intuition, acting with love and forgiveness. And so it'll be a beautiful illumination of how we can transform and move forward after all that we've experienced. Now that full moon in Scorpio, like I mentioned, is happening on the 23rd. On the 25th, two days later, is when that Mercury retrograde ends. So much going on this month. So those are the top five transits. Let's break it down. Let's go through each planet by planet because this is going to really be what blows your mind as we see how each planet as a life coach is teaching us a specific lesson that leads to the bigger story, the bigger narrative of how we can expect April to unfold for us energetically and how we're actually going to navigate it, which leads me into sharing a very quick announcement for you. This has been so fun. On the Astrological New Year on March 19th, I launched a Telegram channel called the Astro Weather Report, where every single day I send a voice memo to the Telegram chat, helping you navigate that day's astro energy. Because a lot of people watch these videos and they take all the notes and they listen and they understand. But then when that day actually comes, like April 12th, April 16th, April 22nd, they're like, wait a second, what, what was happening today? Why am I feeling off? Oh my gosh, I have this special event. Why am I waking up feeling this way? 
you can tap into the Telegram chat every morning and I say, hey, today this is happening, remember. And this is how you're going to navigate it. Sometimes I also do bonus voice memos where I give you channeled messages. We do some astrology education. Like last month, I helped all the subscribers understand how to look up their birth chart when there's a new and a full moon and see how it's going to impact them. We also do other kind of workshops and webinars. So it's been so fun. If you want to join or check it out, I'm doing a seven day free trial. You'll find the link in the description box below. I'd love to have you join. And the best part about it is no matter when you join, you will have access to all the previous voice memos. So you can go back to the beginning, the astrological new year. You can go back to the pinned posts of any kind of workshops or education I did on astrology. So much action packed. So with all of that, Let's get into the planet by planet breakdown. I'm going to take all the planets off this chart. We're going to put them back up one by one. Grab your pen and paper. Make sure you pay attention to your primary life coach. Let's get into it. So of course, starting out with the sun, when we talk about the sun, we are talking about the current astrological sun season. As we start off the month, we are in the sun season of Aries. This is the astrological new year where the sun brings fire, heat, passion, intensity into our lives again. We feel like initiating starting projects, but unfortunately this year it's a little bit different because we are also welcoming in the ecliptic energy where we can try to open a door and if the universe doesn't want us to walk through it, it says, no way, hold on, let me rearrange it and give you a different door. So it's a little different of a astrological new year than most typical years. And of course, as the sun moves through the zodiac energy of Aries, it's going to run into the north node. It's going to have a total solar eclipse. It will run into Chiron where it will heat up our ability to look at a wound, a trauma, a trigger, and bring some heat into that and allow us to heal something. And then on the 19th of April, we will have the sun moving into the zodiac energy of Taurus, where we will kick off this beautiful Venusian sun season. I love the sun season of Taurus. It truly is what I call self-care season, where we want to indulge in the luxuries of life, taste nice things, smell nice things, go on a luxury vacation, take our bubble baths, and just simply enjoy nature and life and all the abundance around us. So the sun season of Taurus starts on the 19th. And once the sun gets into Taurus, there is going to be so much potent energy in this zodiac sign as we have Uranus and Jupiter creating the lottery aspect. Mercury will show up after his retrograde. Venus will come home at the end of the month and Mars will eventually catch up and also enter the zodiac energy of Taurus. So the sun is gonna come in on the 19th, start heating it up, and that's a whole other story we'll talk about in the month of May. Then let's go into the two main lunations of the month, starting out with the new moon total solar eclipse in the zodiac energy of Aries that is happening on the 8th of April. Again, don't want to spend too much time on it in this video. You can go watch the other video. But knowing on this day, we have it conjunct Chiron, lots of healing, lots of potent energy. The moon in Aries brings our emotional needs to the forefront with our emotional triggers. It is because we are not being heard. We are not being honored. Maybe your independence is being challenged, or maybe you're just simply not getting your needs met and you're sick and tired of it. You're done with it and you're going to speak up once and for all. So pay attention. The moon represents our emotions when it's an Aries. It's a little hot, heated, and temperamental. Now, on the 23rd of the month, we have the full moon in Scorpio with the sun now in the zodiac energy of Taurus. This is the full moon of the year that is truly our financial full moon because Taurus rules the stability and structure of our finances, of what we value, of the things that we have, our material possessions. And Scorpio is about the money that connects us to other people loans, debts, taxes, inheritance, your business partner's money, people that invest in you. And so we have a full moon in Scorpio collectively in society. It is a time where that illuminates and reveals and highlights financial instability, things that have to be transformed, things that have to be crumbled. So just pay attention. There might be something coming up around that time. Your finances may have some kind of um, epiphany or resolution that needs to happen. So that will be the full moon in Scorpio. Like I mentioned, the last two full moons in Scorpio have been eclipses. This one will not. It will feel a lot better and less dramatic. And the last thing I do want to say about this full moon in Scorpio is Scorpio deals with the emotional depths of our lives, betrayal, jealousy, power, control, manipulation, those kind of things. Those might be highlighted at this time. It also rules karma. So karmic cycles kind of ending. And also it can feel kind of painful 
people. There might be this sense of mourning. It happens three days after the lottery aspect. And so maybe this big epiphany, we hit the lottery, our lives are going to change forever. And we're kind of grieving or mourning or accepting that our old life is over because we have this beautiful, expansive, abundant growth that's ahead of us. And things are going to look different from here on out. So that could highlight a lot of emotions. So be careful with that around that time. Then let's move into Mercury. Mercury, like I mentioned, is going to be a big key player this month because he's in retrograde, retrograding through the zodiac energy of Aries. And so Mercury moving through Aries always every year brings us a energy of heat and passion and directness and boldness to our words, to our communication, to our mind, to our thoughts. It is like literally our mind is on fire. Now, as we go retrograde, it's about going back over things. And so Mercury will run into the sun, into the North Node, into Venus, into Chiron, um, lots of potent energy. Again, not going to spend too much time on it. Big, big thing to pay attention to, especially when it comes to anything that Mercury rules, transportation, communication, technology. As Mercury retrogrades, he will retrograde from the first of the month till the 25th. So most of the month, he will retrograde from 27 degrees back to 15. On his journey back, when we get to the 12th of April, this is what we call the Mercury Kazemi. It's the halfway point. It's when Mercury runs or backs into the sun. This is when we have our epiphanies, our downloads, our ahas. We find the answer, the data points, the conversation finally happens where we get to move forward. And we are like, ah, enlightened. The light bulb turns on. We know what we need to do. And when we get to the 25th, Mercury runs into the North Node for the second time. So this is fated. This is destined. This is meant for me. This is why I've waited so long. Now the information makes so much more sense and now I can move to my future. I can move towards my destiny in an easier way with flow and ease that takes into account my needs, my wants, and my desires. So that's a big story for Mercury this month. So then we move into Venus. So Venus is a very important planet when we talk about relationship astrology because Venus is how we love who we love, what we value, how we're going to navigate the things in our life, like our relationships, our money, our material possessions, our creative projects, all the things that bring pleasure into our life. And this month, Venus actually starts out April in the zodiac energy of Pisces, and then she will move into the zodiac energy of Aries. So if we think of Venus, right, the goddess of love, when she is in Pisces, the fish, the water energy, she is like the mermaid goddess in flow. It's a creative, beautiful energy. It feels so surreal. So the way that we're loving as we move into April, this Piscean mermaid goddess energy, there's going to be a lot of room for forgiveness, for love, for empathy, for ourselves, for our relationships. You might be feeling very creative, like all these ideas, you're in flow, like your passion projects, things are coming alive. If you love music, you might be listening to a lot of music at this time. You might be having a craving or desiring to go back into flow, dance, and exercise. Such a beautiful energy. However, very quickly after we begin the month of April, Venus will move into the zodiac energy of Aries, and this happens on the 6th. So this is our mermaid, mystical, magical goddess becoming a warrior princess. <laughs> when Venus moves into Aries, this is a feminine energy moving into a masculine sign where it's like, you know what? I can be a warrior princess. I can be an Amazonian goddess. Like I can seize the day. I can also kick ass and take names. And I'm gonna do that from a place of feminine beauty. And so this is now our relationships going into this Aries energy that we're already feeling right before the total solar eclipse where we are really stepping into our warrior princess and saying, these are the things I want. This is what I desire. And I'm going to fight for what brings me pleasure. If I want that new car, I'm going to start working towards getting that new car. If I want to change my relationship, I'm going to start putting the work in, right? Aries is direct forward momentum, doing things, craving it, desiring it, instinctual, impulsive, act now, think later. And Venus rules over the things that we love. And so you're going to be acting this way and moving this way in relationships, creative projects, all of those things. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. The last thing I want to say about this is be aware from the 6th all the way till the end of the month with Venus and Aries, this can be a seductress kind of energy. This could be tempting fate. This could be trouble. I want you to think of like a toddler under seven in our relationship sector with our money, with our creative projects and with our material possessions. You want to be careful with that energy. We can be feeling a little bit more dramatic, but 
ultimately it is like us coming even deeper and embodying the topic I keep discussing, and that is stepping into your main character energy. So lots of stuff going on. Fight for what you want, speak your truth, and get the things that you find pleasure and joy more infused into your life and kick out with that warrior princess vibes, the things that do not serve you anymore. Now at the end of the month on the 30th, Venus will come home to the zodiac energy of Taurus. I love this season. I love when this happens. Venus is the landlord of Taurus. She is coming home to make our life beautiful, pleasurable. Taurus is the luxury, sensual, um, feel nice things, taste nice things, smell nice things, like just really enjoy and indulge in life. Um, so beautiful energy that will be infused, again, into our money, into our material possessions, into our relationships. So self-care energy with the sun there, Venus coming home to Taurus and using this magical, loving energy pleasure-filled energy into our relationships. And this is where we essentially see her go from the mermaid goddess to the warrior princess to the queen. The ultimate feminine energy in flow, receptivity, allowing abundance to come in. It's right after the lottery aspect. So like whatever magical things happen, whatever the eclipse has brought into our life, however it's been rearranged for the month of April, we are gonna sit back at the end of the month as we move into May and allow ourselves to receive the beauty, the abundance, the blessing, the luck, as Venus is in her most open and receptive magnetic energy of the entire year. So that then leads us into Mars, who is going to tell us how to act, how to move forward, how to make decisions. And like we mentioned earlier, Mars is in the zodiac energy of Pisces for the entire month. He will move from seven degrees of Pisces to 29 degrees. In the final moments of April, he will move into Aries, his home sign. So Mars will be at home, Venus will be at home as we move into May. We'll talk more about that later. But remembering that Mars is how we're gonna act and this is going to be a lot of energy high and lows. Mars rules our stamina, our energy, our chi. Pisces is the fish. I want you to think of the tides. It comes in, it comes out, the waves rolling over us. So do not be discouraged if through the month of April you like have this passion to do something and the next day you're like laying in bed and you don't get anything done on your to-do list. We will have time to get the to-do list done, to take action, to move forward once we get into May. This month, we are gonna trust our intuition. We are gonna allow, we are going to slow our nervous system. We are gonna do those spiritual practices. Lots of things that are going to allow us to regulate and to be patient and to truly understand before we start acting. So that's a big thing for Mars this month. Now with that, let's move into Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, is my favorite planet. This is the energy of luck, expansiveness, growth, opportunity, blessing, whatever Jupiter is up to. He's saying, hey, come over here if you want some goodness in your life. Jupiter will be in the energy of Taurus running into, of course, Uranus our planet of rebellion, of liberation, the planet whose motto is choose change before change chooses you, which essentially means that if you've been wanting to do something in your life, but you're too scared, Uranus will blow your life up. He will have a breakthrough. He will burn your house down. He will have your husband leave you. Like if you're not meant to have it, he's going to take it away so you can move on into the next chapter of your life. So Jupiter and Uranus coming together in the 20th, the lottery aspect. Oh, amazing. 22 degrees of Taurus. So check your chart. See if you have any planets near that degree point. It will impact you most heavily. If you are a Scorpio rising like me, this will be a very big blessing to your relationship sector. And also remembering that Jupiter is in his home stretch of being in Taurus. He has been in Taurus since May of last year. So after that lottery aspect on the 20th, he will be at 22 degrees. He only has eight more degrees to go. And by May 25th, he will leave Taurus and enter into Gemini for an entire year. And his final time in Taurus will have him running into the sun, which heats up the blessings. And at the last and final moments, he will come conjunct Venus. We'll talk more about this in May, but Venus and Jupiter are benefic planets. And every year when they come conjunct, it's a very beautiful day in the astrology. They come conjunct at 29 degrees of Taurus, the anoretic degree, a powerful degree in astrology. And this is where they decide to meet up as Jupiter gives us his final blessings from the lottery aspect from his year in Taurus before he moves into Gemini. So we'll circle back to that, but you can see there will be a pile up of planets in Taurus heating up and activating our pleasure sectors of life. Also our financial area of life, also the area of life that deals with agriculture, holistic medicine, nature, 
all the Taurus areas of our life. Then let's move into Saturn. We can never forget Saturn. He's always running in the background. Saturn is our tough love dad, teaching us lessons, giving us obstacles and challenges to overcome. We know that Saturn is in Pisces. He's been there since March of last year, and he will be there until 2026. This month, he cross-checks Mars and says, hey, before you keep moving, before you keep acting, before you stay in the left lane, pause, stop, reflect. Do you have strong foundations? Do you have your spiritual practices nailed down? Do you have the ability to look at your emotional needs, your energetic needs? Saturn is teaching us major lessons on having a strong mental health foundation. He also wants us this month to not lean into self-sabotage and victimization because being in Pisces, when the energy gets volatile, when shit starts hitting the fan, when the eclipses are rocking us and we don't know what's happening, we may want to overindulge. We may try to escape our reality, drinking, drugs, um, shopping addictions, like all of these things can come up this month. I want you to pay special attention because Saturn is gearing up for his retrograde. Doesn't kick off till the end of June, but he's in pre-shadow territory meaning all the things that we're doing that we're not supposed to be doing because of Saturn, he's gonna come back and teach us another lesson and we're gonna have to circle back over and over again until we understand the Saturn in Pisces lessons. If you still need help and you don't understand what the Saturn in Pisces lessons are, go back and watch that video. I'll link it in the description box below. A year ago, I did an entire video talking about what we can expect during the three-year cycle of Saturn in Pisces and also the lessons we're meant to learn. Saturn is always teaching us that's how we grow, that's how we mature. If you don't learn the lessons, life can get hard. We call him Lord Karma for a reason. So this month, Mars and Saturn are meeting up. They are the malefic planets where Venus and Jupiter are the benefic planets. This is a conjunction that happens every two years. And of course, it happens in the month of April with all the other wild stuff going on. Then we're gonna dive into Neptune. Neptune also, of course, in Pisces. He is at the final degrees of Pisces. So of course, he's gonna cross check Mars as well. We'll talk more about that in the date by date breakdown. I also talked about that when we mentioned the top major transits of the month. So we're not going to harp too much on that. Then we have Chiron, of course, our healer, our wounds, our traumas, our triggers, what we're working on overcoming in the zodiac energy of Aries, very much impacting the new moon total solar eclipse. And as Chiron transits through Aries, this is a longer transit. It's been going on for a while, but it's asking us to heal our masculine wounds, our anger issues, our ability to heal our relationship we have with ourselves, not being our own worst enemy, speaking up for our needs, wants, and desires being more independent, putting our oxygen mask on, stepping into our main character. All of that is something that we are learning, especially in the month of April, as we have all these planets being activated by Chiron, our wounded healer. And then of course, Pluto, we know Pluto is now in Aquarius, journeying through, shaking things up in the collective, in technology, in AI, in humanitarian um, you know, situations, um, lots of things going on with that. Nothing we have to really talk about for the month of April, just recognizing that he is the co-ruler of the full moon in Scorpio, Mars as the primary ruler, Pluto as the secondary ruler. And so we'll talk more about that again in the other video. Now, also remembering Pluto is making progress. He is at one degrees and some minutes. By the end of the month, he's getting closer to two degrees where he will then eventually start retrograding back into the zodiac energy of Capricorn. So we're in our final um, time in 2024 where we're getting an introduction to what the next 20 years is going to look like and what Pluto in Aquarius is trying to transform in our life. Again, big topic, nothing we need to really pay attention to on a macro scale for the month of April. We got lots of other stuff that's important to pay attention to. With all of that, let's go ahead and do the date by date breakdown. You may wanna grab out your calendar. Almost every single day this month, we have something important, something impactful going on. I'm gonna reset the chart for the 1st of April and we're gonna break it down little by little. So let's get into that. So that roller coaster analogy I used at the beginning of this video is something I want you to remember as we go through each week. The first week we are really sitting down in that roller coaster, anticipating something big. We can feel it. We just don't know what it is yet or how it's gonna turn out. The second week we are at the apex point. We are climbing, we are going up, like things are getting jittery, things are getting volatile, we're getting more excited. Life is happening to us and we have no control over it anymore. Once we get into the third week, we are coming down. We have hit the apex point. 
it. We are coming down. It is a free fall. Life is happening around us. The lottery aspect is happening. We are feel like we're on a high, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is amazing. And then the final week of April, we are coasting back into the terminal. It is like, wow, what a roller coaster. That was amazing. I have clarity. I have peace. Like that was incredible. There were moments I was scared. There were moments I didn't know what was going to happen. There were moments I wish I could have gotten off the ride. There are moments that I thought, what the hell am I doing? I'm to blame. All the thoughts that you can experience from the minute you sit down on a roller coaster to getting off that roller coaster is how it's going to flow week by week through the month of April. So let's break that down, starting out with the first week of April. Well, what's in the stars from April 1st? To the sixth. Of course, we start off the first of the month with April Fool's Day and Mercury kicking off as retrograde. So you do not want to play any April Fool's tricks this year. They may not come across, they may not land, people may be getting upset. Remember, this is the point now where communication is going to start to fail. You could feel like you just cannot think clearly, you cannot think straight, you are trying to sign a contract, a negotiation, it's not working, nobody is agreeing, everyone has their own mind on their own needs, wants, and desires. There's not a lot of collaboration. You might have to start revisiting old conversations and dusting off the ones that were under the rug. Have those conversations once and for all, but just expect on April Fool's Day to wake up with your technology being wonky, gadgets, you know, breaking down, um, traffic jams, all the typical Mercury retrograde stuff because Mercury is our trickster and April Fool's Day is a day where not only we get to play tricks on others, but the universe can play tricks on us. So just be careful on this day. Now on the 2nd of April, we have Venus conjuncting Neptune, beautiful, magical, dreamy day because Neptune is a energy of everything is possible, living in the clouds, dreams and spells, and just living in la-la land with rose-colored glasses on, painting and drawing and singing and creating. And Venus is all about making things pleasurable, making things beautiful. So this is a great day to idealize life, romanticize your life, go on a date, um, you know, create that art project. If you wanted to do a DIY at your house, um, you know, start a new project of some sort, something that you just love to do that's not always directly correlated to making money, but just to experience pleasure and joy, a very magical day on the second. Then we move on to the 4th of April. On this day, we have two astro weather events. One is the sun running into the North Node, a very faded, destined time. The sun heats things up, it illuminates, it casts a spotlight on the North Node, our destiny, what we're supposed to be focusing on. We'll get more into the specifics for you based on your rising sign in just a little bit. But whatever you currently are supposed to be focusing on, the North Node, the North Star in Aries, the sun is going to heat that up, make it so obvious on that date. And also on that date, Venus moves into the zodiac energy of Aries, bringing more of this main character energy, fighting for what we want, fighting for what we desire, starting to really prioritize um, the things that we love, trying to accomplish and accumulate the things that bring us pleasure into our life. Big, big energy. We start doing the warrior princess, the Amazon goddess vibes, and we are learning to love the self more than we love anyone or anything else in our lives. So beautiful energy that's going to be activated on the 4th. And then we get to the 6th. This is a very unique day. On the 6th, right before the sun rises, I want you to go outside, look at the eastern horizon, and you're going to see a triple conjunction. You are going to see the moon, Mars, and Saturn all lined up in the zodiac energy of Pisces right before the sun rises. So just wanted to bring that up. If you're in the northern hemisphere, go check that out. A really cool thing that's happening on the 6th of April. Then we move into the second week of April. So what's in the stars from April 7th to the 13th? This is the point on the roller coaster where we're like, oh shit, can't go back now. My hands are off the wheel. I just have to let life happen to me. So we kick off the week on the 8th with the sun conjuncting Chiron. So the sun is making its way through Aries. It is Aries sun season. On this date, he runs into Chiron. Our wounds are being highlighted. The sun brings heat, a spotlight upon the things that are triggering us, our traumas, the things that need attention in healing. So a big day where their healing journey physically, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, relationally, it's going to come to the forefront. Front and center can't run anymore. You can't hide from your pain. You can't hide from your wounds. It's time to address them. On the 8th, we also have that day, the new moon total solar eclipse. Big, big, powerful day. In the afternoon, around 2 o'clock, we're going to have totality in many parts of the United States. So on the 8th, it is a Monday. It's going to be a very weird Monday. Um, allow the energy to just flow. I encourage you to take the day off if you can. But what a way to start this week. Then we move 
move on to the 10th. On the 10th, we have Mars running into Saturn. This is a big energy because Mars is the ruler of Aries. He's kind of the one in control of the eclipse, the one that's in control of Mercury retrograde, the one that's in control of Venus in his home sign. And Mars is over here saying, go slow, right? Remember, Mars is in Pisces the whole month. Go slow, have trust, be faithful, have a spiritual practice. And then he runs into Saturn on the 10th where Saturn's like, stop, pause. Do you have a strong foundation in your spirituality? Do you really trust as life is falling apart? This is a conjunction that happens every two years. It's time to get sober. It's time to get back in your spiritual practices. It's time to have structure and routine and discipline and commitment around your mental health, your routines and your habits. Um, this conjunction specifically has not happened, even though they meet up every two years, it has not happened in Pisces in 30 years. And so this is a big energy with Saturn teaching us the Piscean lessons and Mars coming in and helping us take action and form more discipline and be more committed than ever before in the Pisces area of our life. And then we end the week on the 11th, the halfway point, we call it the Mercury Kazemi, Sun Mercury conjunction. This is where we get the aha, the epiphany, communication's been wonky, I'm needing to make a decision, I don't know what information to gather, I don't even know what questions to ask. All the miscommunication, complications, tough conversations come to a head, we have an epiphany, we understand what further questions we need to ask, where we need to go seeking more information, it is a big revelation. It is happening at 22 degrees of Aries. So two, 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 two with the sun at 22 and Mercury at 22, a day of clarity, a beautiful way to end this very chaotic week, which moves us into the third week of April. So what's in the stars from April 13th to April 20th. This is the point when we are coming down the roller coaster. Life is happening to us. It is starting to get exciting. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. What was I thinking? All of that volatile, potent energy. We are starting to experience this week, kicking off on the 15th where Mercury comes conjunct Chiron for the second time. We already had Mercury run into our wounds, our traumas, our triggers, the conversation that needs to ha happen, the things we need to heal. On the 15th, Mercury comes back to revisit and is like, hey, we really need to have that conversation. We really need to heal this. Hey, there's a shift in energy. Maybe we need to go to couples counseling. Maybe I need to write a letter of forgiveness to somebody. Maybe I need to ask deeper questions. Maybe I need to express my own wants, needs, and desires to heal the wounds I have with inside of myself. Maybe I need to go talk to a therapist. There is immense healing through communication and conversation, specifically in our relationships, on on the 15th. So pay attention to that. We are coming back to this same conjunction towards the end of the month into May, but this is a beautiful time to get more information on how to heal and to revisit something that has triggered you or traumatized you in the past and bring clarity to it once and for all. Then on the 17th, Venus will run into the North Node. Venus is what we love, who we love, our money, our pleasure, our things we desire. And the North Node is our destiny, what is meant for us. I see the 17th of April as a big day for us to see the relationships that have made it, what is still standing in our life, because at this point, it is going to show us this is destined for me. This is fated to come with me into the next chapter of my life. And so if you've rearranged your money, if you've changed something in your relationships, if you've bought a new material possession, which I hope you haven't because it's Mercury retrograde, but if you did, this is going to show you what can truly come with you into the future. So um, a lot of revelations and relationships, um, asking and moving forward with a big healing energy. Um, it's going to feel like your needs are going to be met. Like, oh my gosh, this person listened to me. We had tough conversations. We're still aligned. Yes, they're in their truth. I'm in my truth. Our needs, wants, and desires are still meshing. This feels so good. I feel so healed. We had the hard combos. Let's move forward. Then we come up to the 19th of April, three major things happening on that day. The first one is the sun moves into the energy of Taurus. The second one is Mercury as he's retrograding backwards, runs into Venus. And the third one is we have Mars, sextile Uranus, sextile Jupiter. When the planets are having sex, it's a great aspect. It means they're in favor of and helping and assisting each other out. And we love that Mars is helping us take action, helping something move forward, helping a decision to be made that ultimately leads to the lottery aspect of Jupiter and Uranus happening the next day on the 20th. So we'll circle back to that in a moment. 
But on the 19th, the sun moves into the zodiac energy of Taurus. We love this energy. It is self-care season. It is a time for us to indulge in the pleasures and luxuries of life. Be a human to the fullest. Eat nice foods, smell nice things, go out for walks in nature, do some healing with herbs and, you know, things that are given to us by God. And also this is going to start taking that fire intensity, boldness and directness of Aries and starting to turn it down a little. We're going to get a little bit more grounded, a little bit more practical, a little bit more stable, a little bit more comfortable and less like we're on a roller coaster. So beautiful energy. And then also not forgetting that Mercury runs into Venus on this day. So this is again, conversations around relationships, more healing to be had, more negotiations, more understanding. Our mind is on the things that we love. This is the day on the 19th that I can truly see exes reaching out, old relationship pains coming to the surface, one more conversation that needs to be had. This is where we have to really maybe review something, rewrite a contract, um, have some sort of conversation about how our relationships are gonna be moving forward. Um, money, situations, projects at work could be coming up. This could also be a day where we are changing our mind. We're canceling appointments. We're realizing we don't really value things. Someone might come back into your life and be like, oh my God, I can't believe we broke up. I want to get back together. Or, you know, you stay together. And on that day, the person goes, you know what? I just don't think you can meet my needs. Sorry we got to move forward. The following day on the 20th, big, big day. It is the conjunction of the year of all of 2024. The 20th is the big day, the lottery aspect, Jupiter and Uranus coming conjunct. We're somewhere in your life, depending on your birth chart, it's going to feel like you hit the lottery, something sudden, something unexpected, truly coming out of left field because the lottery aspect is not something that we see coming. It is coming out of left field that changes everything for your future in a moment, in an instant, and it's gonna feel so good, even though it might feel a little scary and a little uncomfortable, but Jupiter is here to grow us, to expand us, to take us out of our comfort zone and allow us to have faith and optimistic trust that it's all working out in our favor. Now with this lottery aspect, there could be sudden breakthroughs, sudden reversals, breaking down or breaking you through one way or another as you get to the bottom of that roller coaster ride. Then we move into the fourth week of April. This is the part of the roller coaster ride where we have done the up, down, the loop de loops and we are heading back to the station and we are processing processing what the hell just happened, the information we received, how our life has turned upside down, and having those final moments on the roller coaster ride of just kind of surrendering and making peace with what just happened before we get off the ride of April. And so we kick off the week on the 21st with two major astro weather events happening at the same time. The first one being Venus running into Chiron in the zodiac energy of Aries. Remember, Venus is our relationships, and we've processed a lot in relationships this month. We've stepped into our main character during the eclipse. We've asked for our needs, wants, and desires to be met. We've had tough conversations with Mercury retrograde. We've had to go back to old friendships, old romantic relationships, maybe exes or past lovers or past business partners or past clients have come back into our life and we've had to have tough conversations. We've had to create boundaries. A lot of that has already happened. On the 21st, Venus running into Chiron is bringing up some wounds that still need to be healed. Some unmet needs, some things not discussed. There is still a trigger, a trauma, something from the past that is going to be illuminated within your relationships. Also remember Venus is our finances, a creative project you're trying to push forward. Um, maybe it's a material possession you're trying to purchase or sell. There's a trigger. There's something coming up that's like, oh, red flag still needs to be healed. On the 21st as well, the other astro weather event is the sun in a square with Pluto in Aquarius. This is a transit that has not happened in over 250 years. Very unique. Pluto wants to destroy and break down. The sun heats up and illuminates. So this can be an intense day, a destructive energy. As this wound is being presented in our relationships, we thought we were in the clear. We thought everything worked itself out. Apparently it did not. And now there's this destructive Pluto energy of saying, make it or break it. Are you keeping it for the next 20 years or not? The 21st is a really big day. Then on the 23rd, we have the full moon in Scorpio. This is going to be that big destructive energy of finally saying what needs to go, what needs to transform, what needs to heal. Remember that the ruler is Mars still in Pisces and Pluto. And remember what's happening just two days before is Pluto will be in a square with the sun. And if it's a full moon, that means Pluto will also be in a square with the moon. So on the full moon of Scorpio, we will have a T square involving Pluto, who is the ruler of this lunation, asking us to release, let go, look at in its full entirety, the big picture of what still needs healing 
and also looking at the grieving process, right? We're at the end of the roller coaster ride. We're like, holy crap, that was a lot of information. There was a lot of shifts and I have to grieve. I have to let go. I have to process. I have to heal so that I can move forward into the next chapter as we move into May. Then we end the week on the 25th with Mercury's retrograde ending. We are done, done, done. Mercury ends his retrograde on the North Node. The information that we've gathered, pay attention on that day, what conversations, what information you're receiving, what contract is being presented to you. It is a big day because we are ending it all and saying, destiny has answered the calling. We know the direction we need to go. Look back to the astrological new year. On that date, Mercury was on the North Node going forward. And now he has circled all the way back around to the conversation we were having around March 19th, to the topics that we were learning or um, experiencing information around. So we have circled back we have what we need, and now it's time to Aries, start, act, initiate, and move forward because you now know where you stand. Which then leads us into the final few days of the month of April. So what's in the stars from April 28th until May 4th? We are gonna end this with some beautiful, beautiful energy. This is when you get off the roller coaster ride, you are standing on stable ground again, you feel at peace and you go, what the hell happened? But I feel good about it because on the 29th, Venus leaves Aries, moves into her home sign of Taurus. Oh my gosh, we love this energy, self-care season. We are feeling like we are back in love with life. We are nurturing ourselves. It is a beautiful, beautiful energy. We do have to remember that as all the planets move into Taurus, which is going to be Venus, Mars, Mercury, Mercury, they will all go into the square with Pluto. Venus and Mars met up with Pluto around Valentine's Day. That was the destruction of relationships, highlighting what needs to change and transform in relationships. Now they are coming into a square with Pluto where he's checking in saying, hey, Look at this. Look at how much has happened between Valentine's Day and the end of April in your relationships. Look at the conversations you've had. Look at the healing that's come up. Look at the changes and decisions you've made in your own best interest. How are you doing now? And it's going to be coming with a lot of beauty and pleasure moving forward because Venus is going to move through Taurus. So we love this energy. And then also on that day, Mars will be conjunct Neptune, dreamy, romantic. Um, it's this energy of us being able to take action on creative projects, um, allowing us to manifest, allowing us to see and dream dream and believe that all things are possible. Careful on this day, you might feel a little exhausted, your chi may be a little unstable, um, but we're letting go, we're letting go, we're forgiving, we're moving past all the hurts once and for all, the tough conversations are in the past, and now we have a higher perspective on everything as we move forward. And on the 30th of the month, Mars comes home to Aries, we end April kicking ass, taking action, having a clear plan. We are waking up from the hibernation of Pisces season and make sure you don't miss the intuitive messages you received as we end the month of April and move into May. And with that, we've made it. We've made it to the end of April, breaking down all the astrological weather. As you can see, I was not kidding. It is an action-packed month with almost every single day something going on in the sky. So remember, I do have my Telegram channel. I would love for you to join us with that seven-day free trial. Every day, you're gonna get it broken down, a voice memo in the morning to your phone, letting you know, reminding you what's in the stars, what's going on, what you can be feeling, and how you can navigate the day ahead of you. So if you want to join us, go ahead, find it in the description box below. I'm going to wrap up this portion of the video. Just thanking you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of my astro family. I love when you guys leave comments. Let me know how you're feeling. How did the first eclipse in Libra treat you? Where are you at in your relationships? I love being able to connect with you guys. It is such a passion for me to do the YouTube videos, which are longer format. Of course, I love being on TikTok and giving you like the Cliff Notes version, making it fun. But this is where I found my home first on YouTube. So thank you so much for being here. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're new and you like the lens of relational astrology. And we're going to break down the rising signs next. I want to let you know that for this video, as I'm doing the rising signs, I'm not only going to be talking about the areas of your chart that's going to be impacted and what relationships in your life you want to pay attention to that may be getting some shifts and upsets, but I'm also going to be doing some channeled messages. If you didn't know, when I talk about astrology, 
astrology and I'm doing birth chart readings. And not only am I looking at it from the lens of astrology, the science, the math, like all the details that you learn about, but I also get a lot of channeled intuitive messages. And with Mars being my ruling planet in Pisces, I have been getting so many beautiful channeled messages through my dreams and my spirit guides and my higher self giving me information that I'm needing to pass along to the people I come in contact with. So I feel like it's going to be so beautiful as I dive into doing the rising signs with a channeled message on top of your typical astro forecast with a relationship focus. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below if it resonated. I will catch you guys in the next video. Let's go ahead and break down the rising sign forecast. Aries risings, you are ruled by Mars. So your ruling planet this month is in the zodiac energy of Pisces. So I want you to go slow this month. And I know this is so hard for Aries risings, but really this is your challenge from your ruling planet to say, hey, let me work on my nervous system. Let me do some healing. Let me get back into a spiritual practice. Let me get back into meditation or start journaling. Something that helps you soothe your nervous system, soothe your mind, soothe your body. You can feel a lot of inflammation coming up this month. So I want you to be aware of that. Now, this total solar eclipse will be happening in your first house. So the main priority, the main relationship in your life that you need to pay attention to is you. Now, I know that's not hard for you, my Aries Risings, but it's important for you to really dive a little deeper and ask yourself, what are my needs, wants, and desires? How do I put them first? And at what level am I willing to sacrifice those needs, wants, and desires in order to be in partnership, in order to be in collaboration or harmony with another? person. That is going to be a big theme that comes up as Mercury retrogrades through your first house, making you think more about yourself and your needs, wants, and desires, and ultimately eclipsing relationships in and out of your life that don't serve what you need moving forward. Now, the lottery aspect on the 20th is happening in your second house. This is hella exciting with Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct in your money sector. And so you could be getting some money unexpectedly that comes in. Now, this could be a raise. This could be a bunch of clients. If you're an entrepreneur, this could be a material possession or an asset or a resource that you've been hoping for, wishing for, praying for. You didn't think it was coming and all of a sudden it shows up. So I want you to focus on relationships that you are tied to from a financial aspect. Now, again, this aspect isn't something we necessarily have to work for, but if you keep your eyes on the people in your life that benefit you financially, that pay your bills, that you know support you in some way or another. So this could be someone, if you live with somebody and you live in their asset, maybe it's your boss or your job and they pay your bills through income. Maybe it's clients that pay you, know, you for your services. Be present with those relationships and nurture those relationships. Give time to those type of relationships because that lottery aspect could just change your life. So that is your channeled message. That is also your astrological forecast, my Aries risings. It is all about you. You are the main character of the Zodiac. So lead us all on how to step into that energy, but don't forget to honor yourself in the process. Taurus risings, you are ruled by Venus and Venus this month is up to a lot. Remember, she starts in Pisces, moves into Aries, and then comes home to Taurus all within the 30 days of April. So you're going to feel your energy shift and the way in which you should be focusing your energy and attention into your relationships differently throughout the month. You are starting the month by being more forgiving, more loving, more open, more accepting to the things in your life that you value. These are the people in your life that you value. These are your material possessions that you value. These are your creative projects and towards your money. Now, in the middle of the month, from the 6th to the 30th, you are going to feel a little bit more warrior princess. You are going to want to speak up, tell people what you need and desire with a bold attitude. You're going to want to protect the things that you value in a warrior goddess way. You're going to want to fight to claim your piece of the puzzle. This is going to be a fiery, spicy, seductive, temptress energy. I want you to channel this. I want you to step into it. And then remember at the end of the month, you are going to have your ruling planet Venus coming home to Taurus, coming back into your first house. This is a magnetic, beautiful time for you. As we go into the month of May, you are going to be drawing people in. You are going to be more beautiful than ever. That is something that is yet to come. But for now, we are focusing on the self. As as we have all the planets moving through Aries, the total solar eclipse and the Mercury retrograde through your 12th house, I want you to focus and pay attention to the limiting beliefs in your head, how you are speaking to yourself, the stories you're telling yourself about your reality, about what you hold true, what you value. 
you because it is the mind that is affecting your reality. It's not allowing you to manifest. So really focusing on yourself going inward is going to be important, speaking up for your needs, wants, and desires. And then when we get to the lottery aspect on the 20th, activating your first house, this is a beautiful magnetic day for you. This is going to be kicking off the magnetism, the abundance that you're going to be receiving, pulling it into you. If you have a job or something where you have to gain clients, you have to acquire assets, you have to call in abundance in some way, this is going to be very beneficial for you. Now, if you are looking for a relationship, this is going to magnetize people to you. If you are looking for more clients or attention, this is going to be the kickoff through May with all the planets coming into your first house, making you look, feel beautiful, bringing so much abundance into your life. So my Taurus Risings, what a wonderful energy for you to step into. You need to get rid of the stories in your head, the enemy in your head. No one is criticizing you more than you. And we got to get rid of that so that you can call in the relationships that serve you in a most beautiful, pleasurable way. So I hope you enjoyed this channel message. Let me know if it resonates in the comments below. I'm going to send you so much love and light. We have lots of beautiful energy coming for you, not only in April, but also in May. Gemini Risings, your ruling planet is Mercury. So this Mercury retrograde is going to be a big challenge for you because it is retrograding in your 11th house. So this is your house of community, connection, and tribe, a friendship circle. And you're meant to lead a tribe at Gemini Rising with Aries ruling your 11th house. Now you've been probably challenged on what tribe to lead, who wants to listen to me, or maybe on what topic am I supposed to be even leading the tribe in? And so there's a lot of mental stuff going on with you right now. You're confused. You can't make decisions. You're trying to have conversations. You're trying to learn something. You feel like your mind is on fire with this Mercury retrograde. So I really want you to slow down. I want you to understand my Gemini risings. And this is kind of a lifelong lesson for you, but definitely in the month of April, something for you to honor in yourself is that you don't need to have all the information right now. I know you want it. I know you want to paint the whole picture and be an expert in everything, but you don't need to know it all. It will come when it's meant to. This Mercury retrograde grade will bring it up when the timing is right, when the healing is possible, when the information can be absorbed easier. Honor yourself. This is a Mercury, Mercury retrograde for you. Now, the new moon total solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house. So this is community. This is tribe. The people you may have been associating with for a long time may not be your people anymore. You might be looking for a completely different tribe to fit into. And this eclipse can literally eclipse out your social circle, your community, the people you've leaned on for quite some time, and having you focus your energy and intention on a totally new group of people where you might feel like a fish out of water and you're you're trying to, again, gain a lot of information so you can become the leader, which is what you always want to do in relationships and in friendships, but you're being challenged to just get out there, meet new people, be open with this eclipse, and see what comes to you after the Mercury retrograde. Now, Taurus is your 12th house. So this lottery aspect, this sudden unexpected breakthrough from Jupiter and Uranus comes through intuitive downloads. I want you to be so present around the 20th of the month leading up to the 20th because this lottery, this luck, this thing that could change your life is not coming from anything on earth. It is coming from above, from God, source, your higher self. You want to hear that message. So I encourage you. I challenge you. My guides are telling me that you need to be slow, steady, turn your mind off, turn your intuition on, connect through meditation, sound baths, journaling, um, listening to mediums, YouTube videos on tarot, like astrology. The messages are coming from the divine and what you need to know that's going to change your life during that lottery aspect. So I hope that resonates. I hope that helps my Gemini risings. Let me know in the comments below and please come back and let me know what download or million dollar idea you channeled during that lottery aspect on 420. Cancer Risings, you are ruled by the moon. This can be a hard energy to navigate because every two to three days, the moon changes zodiac signs. So for the purpose of today's video, we are going to focus on the two lunations of the month and how that's going to be impacting you and your relationships. So first of all, the total solar eclipse, right? This is huge for you as a Cancer Rising. This is going to really eclipse something in or out of your life in the Aries section of your life. This is your career. This is your purpose. This is your legacy. Cancer Risings, you may want to eclipse out the job 
job that you're doing, change industries completely, change your title, change your reputation. And there might be people in your life that show up to help you do just that. Now, I want you to look at also the relationships that are holding you back from stepping into your purpose and the title you want to be known for. Maybe there's people in your life like your family or people like friends that are saying, oh no, you can't become that. You don't want to be in that industry. They are trying to use their influence, their needs, wants, and desires to hold you back from where you want to go in your professional life moving forward and how you want to be seen in the world. This eclipse might really rock that and really shake that and help you step into your true, authentic desire in the career area of your life. Now, the full moon in Scorpio is going to be very impactful for you as well because Cancer Risings, when there's a full moon, you come alive. You really like to see in the dark and be illuminated and get to that point of like, wow, I can see something clearly and I'm ready to let this go, to shed it, to release it. You are good at working with the lunar cycles. So I want you to look at the Scorpio area of your life, which is your fifth house. So we are looking at what needs to be released and let go, what needs to be shed that is blocking you from having more joy and fun in your life. The fifth house is the house of fun. So what hobbies don't serve you anymore? Maybe there's something with your children where you have to let go a little bit so you can step more into your Aries career, purpose, and legacy moving forward. That's going to be a big full moon, bringing up a lot of emotions for you. So just pay attention and navigate that. But I really want you to look at relationships in your life and how are they supporting or blocking you from having fun and joy and leading ultimately to your purpose or the career that you want for the next 20 years of your life. Lastly, I want you to look at your 11th house. That is the area of life of friendship and community. That is the lottery aspect. That is where Uranus and Jupiter will be meeting up on the 20th of April, where you could have a sudden unexpected surprise coming through your friendship group. So I want you to spend time socializing, connecting, getting out there, meeting new people. You never know who you might meet that leads you to the area of life that you want to create and develop and step more into when it comes to your career, your purpose, your legacy. So get out there and network. Someone might know someone who knows someone who allows you to get into the position or the new career that you've been wanting to for such a long time. It is all tied. It is all connected. Go have some fun. The people you have fun with might introduce you to someone that can help you in your career. That is your channeled message, my Cancer Risings. I also wanted to share with you, because you are ruled by the moon, lunar cycle tracking will be super helpful for you. This is something you can do by just looking at the month ahead, seeing what zodiac signs the moon is in each day of the month, making a little table or spreadsheet where every day you make a note and say, what's my energy on a scale of one to 10 and maybe my emotion for, main emotion for the day. And you just track that and see where the moon is and what zodiac sign. And you do that for a couple months and then you can plan your month ahead and say, oh wow, when the moon is in Aries, I feel excited and I have a lot of energy. When the moon gets to Pisces, I'm a little bit more sluggish and those days I'm gonna have lazy days. This is something that Cancer Risings, you will learn throughout the course of your life. You just have to put a little bit more energy into that. Reach out if you need more assistance with that. I'm happy to help you. I could even just do a 30 minute reading for you where we could kind of just do one month ahead and then you'll have the blueprint, the foundation to do this moving forward through the rest of your life. Leo Risings, you are ruled by the sun. And so the sun seasons impact you heavily and wherever the sun falls in your birth chart, whatever area of life it is highlighting and shedding a spotlight upon is going to bring a lot of illumination, heat and vitality to that specific area of your life. Sun seasons are gonna be very important for you. If you have my astrology alchemy journal, the bucket list that I put in here for each sun season is going to apply to you the most being ruled by the sun. So for this month, as we move into April, the sun will be in Aries. So this is about you stepping in to being more independent, more bold, more direct, stepping more into your main character, Leo Risings. I know you're good at this. You are good at making it all about you. So I want you to have that priority and really vision and clarity around your desires. I want you to literally think, where do I want my life to go for the next 20 years? And how am I going to get there and really anchor and lock into that energy? Now, Aries, rules your ninth house. So this is about you exploring, getting out of your comfort zones, stretching yourself a little bit. Maybe it's going back to school. Maybe it's traveling or moving to another country. Maybe it's, um, changing your belief systems by getting into a new religion or a new spiritual practice. Maybe you start reading some deep philosophical books or you start um, asking questions and going to more spiritual events. This is a time for you to really expand your perspective, zoom out on life 
And it's going to ultimately affect how you see the world and how you see yourself in the world, how you want to navigate yourself moving forward. It's a very mental time for you this month. Now, when we get to the middle of the month on the 19th, the sun will move into Taurus. This will be your career house. We love this energy because this is where the lottery aspect is happening for you. So Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct, creating this sudden unexpected breakthrough. Something comes out of nowhere and it's in your area. Area of career, your 10th house. So you might get a promotion, a job opportunity. You might get, um, you know, a new job title. You might get more respect or a higher reputation. You might be more recognized. You're building your legacy. Um, it's such a beautiful time where you're going to be seen as an expert, seen in your industry as someone that is like the go-to person and an opportunity that comes along with that, that can lead you into the next chapter of your life in a big, big way. And the sun is going to heat that up for the entire rest of April and halfway through May. You're about to get a whole bunch of planets moving through your career sector, up leveling this area of your life in massive ways. So ultimately, I want you to pay attention to any relationship in your life that helps you elevate people in your life that can teach you something, people that you associate with when it comes to your career or your industry. Reach out, talk to people, ask questions, hire a mentor, be willing to get out of your comfort zone by getting into new social groups and industries that you want to expand in. You really want to focus on the relationships in your life right now that are directly tied and correlated to your career and what you want to be building and how you want to be seen in the world. You are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. And this month in April, you really want to hang out with people that are going to help elevate your career to make the most of it. I'm so excited for you, Leo Risings. Let me know in the comments below if you're looking for anything in your career life to change, what you hope, what you manifest. And then keep an eye out around the 20th as that lottery aspect moves in. Virgo Risings, your ruling planet is Mercury. So this month, this Mercury retrograde is going to get you. So I want you to just honor your mind. Your mind is going to feel like it's on fire. You have so many questions. You want all the answers. You want to talk, 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 talk. But I'm going to invite you to slow it down because the talk, talk, talk won't lead to anywhere. The data you're collecting is not accurate. The information you're seeking out will be harder to discover. And the clarity that you enjoy my Virgo Risings is not going to be there, at least not till the 25th. And so from the 1st until the 25th, I want you to just slow it down, go inward. If anything, I want you to go over things you already know and perfect it. I want you to go back to conversations you've started and complete them. I want you to look over contracts and negotiations and things in your life that you're needing to tweak a little bit. Don't do anything new, at least not yet. Now, Mercury is going to be retrograding in your eighth house. This is where the new moon total solar eclipse is happening as well. And the eighth house is the area of transformation. It's about going deep below the surface. It's about discovering yourself and your fears and your traumas. It's about vulnerability and intimacy. So I want to challenge you this month have those hard conversations about those taboo topics. If there are people in your life you need to talk to about writing a will, signing it over inheritances, changing loan documents or loan paperwork, maybe you need to have a conversation with your significant other about how you're going to pay the bills, how your money is going to be tied. Maybe you need to have a conversation with someone around money they owe you or a contract you'd like to write up with them, even if it's just a verbal contract. I want you to also challenge yourself to be vulnerable. What do you need to share with someone so they can better understand you? Let it off your heart. Take your skeleton out of the closet. Expose it. Just let it all hang out so you can step more into your authenticity. Now, also, these are taboo subjects you may have to have with people around your fears, your traumas, your triggers, your past or your sexual intimate life, because this is the area of the eighth house. And with Mercury spending a lot of time here, he is forcing you to go back and talk about those hard, hard, don't talk at the dining room table subjects. And you're having an eclipse here. So it's forcing you to put your energy and attention on prioritizing what you need to feel more intimate with another person. It's a big energy for you. So the people you're most deeply connected to this month are it's going to be a challenge and it's inviting you to step up and be more authentic and bold and direct in those intimate spaces of life. Now, halfway through the month, when we get to the sun moving into Taurus and the lottery aspect on the 20th, also in the energy of Taurus, this is exciting. This is your ninth house space. And so this unexpected twist or turn or surprise of Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct in your ninth house is allowing you to expand your mind, to discover unknown lands, to learn information, to 
gain some wisdom, to gain some knowledge. This lottery aspect is going to allow you to change your life. It's going to change your future because of what you learn. And this is great for you because Virgo Risings, you love to learn. You want to know everything. You want to socialize. You want to communicate. You want to understand. And the knowledge or wisdom that's going to come in through a life experience, through living through something, is going to help you create a beautiful new future for yourself. I'm going to give you an example. Maybe you've gone through some really hard things in life and that wisdom that you've gained, the knowledge through the experience, that challenge you've had to overcome, you now have this lottery aspect, this unexpected breakthrough of how you can turn that into a business, how you can help other people. Like There's just this beautiful energy of the information comes in, it clicks this light bulb, and it ultimately changes your life or your perspective. There could be an amazing travel opportunity that's coming up for you around this energy. So if someone invites you on a trip, please wait till Mercury retrograde is over on the 25th because that is your ruling planet. But if the invitation comes in anytime between now and then, you go ahead and take it. So let me know my Virgo risings, what you're moving through in the month of April. Please come back. Let me know in the comments below after the 20th, this lottery aspect, what unexpected surprise came into your life. And I'm going to send you so much love and light as you navigate this Mercury retrograde as your ruling planet. Libra risings, your ruling planet is Venus. And remember Venus this month is on the move. She's moving from Pisces, into Aries, into Taurus, coming home to her home sign. And so what does that mean for you? Well, it means your energy and the way in which you're going to move through the month of April is going to shift. You're going to start out the month in this Venusian goddess mermaid-like energy, loving things, being in flow, being more open to forgive, allowing things to come and go, and just being really fluid. But then when we get to the sixth, as your ruling planet steps into Aries, this is all about you coming home to yourself, prioritizing yourself, stepping into your main character. Venus and Aries is like, what about me? And getting into that warrior princess energy, fighting for the things that you want and that you desire, stepping more into your truth. This has been a big eclipse season for you because it's impacting your first house, the lunar eclipse we just had, and impacting your relationship house. So this ecliptic portal is the relationship time of your life for you to cut out the energy in your life that you are overgiving to others that isn't coming back and serving you. It needs to be this balance, this yin and yang, especially for you, Libra Risings. And Venus, your ruling planet, is going into your seventh house of relationships, saying, these are my needs, these are my wants. You want to meet them? Great. If you don't want to meet them, bye. You're going to feel that from the 6th all the way till the 30th. This is beautiful. Step into your main character. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. I know you like to be in partnerships, but you can't be in a true partnership unless that partner knows exactly how to meet your needs. And then remember at the end of the month, as Venus moves into the energy of Taurus, comes back to her home sign, this is going to feel so beautiful. You're going to have a magical, beautiful May. Um, Lottery aspect in your eighth house of all the rising signs. My Libra Risings, you're the one most likely to win the lottery, literally, because the lottery aspect of Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct around the 20th of April happens in your eighth house. And the eighth house is windfalls of money, money coming to us from external sources. It is like a debt being forgiven. Um, An inheritance comes in, a random check comes in the mail, your partner gets a promotion at work, Um, you have a bunch of clients that sign up or you literally win the lottery. So when I talk about the lottery aspect, everyone says, oh, should I buy a lottery ticket? Libra Risings, you're the one most likely to win the lottery. So take that as you will. It's a beautiful energy. Now, don't forget the total solar eclipse is happening in your relationship sector. So do not be surprised if relationships get eclipsed out of your life, the ones that don't serve. There might be some toxic energy that's got to be cut away, some karma that has to be cleared, um, maybe some healing that needs to be done in relationships that want to continue forward. This is a big, big relationship month for you. So let me know, Libra Risings, in the comments below, what are you moving through? What kind of relationships are you ready to let go of? Who in your life just cannot come with you? And let me know if you buy a lottery ticket because I'm super curious. And if you win, can you just cut me like a small check as your astrologer? <laughs> let me know, Libra Risings. I'm sending you so much love and light. Scorpio Risings, I feel you this month. We got a lot going on as well because our ruling planet is Mars. And we usually have Mars kicking ass, taking names in the left lane. We are filled with energy, vitality, and chi, but not this month. Unfortunately, our vitality is going to be wah-wah as Mars moves through the zodiac energy of Pisces. So we're going to feel sluggish. We're going to feel 
feel slow. We're going to feel impatient. We're going to feel like we're swimming against the current, but that's okay because this is a season of resting for us and allowing the chips to fall where they may. This is about us learning to honor our nervous system. This is about us really learning to tap into our intuition, to find the energy within ourselves by clearing out old toxic energy that doesn't serve us anymore, releasing stored trauma. Like this is such a healing energy for us. If you are a Scorpio rising, it is going to be very important for you to get into a spiritual practice, meditating, slowing down, journaling, going to church, praying, um, affirmations, like all that spiritual stuff, because usually we're on the real world, left lane, go, go, go. And now our ruling planet this month is like, nah, you can't have any of the goodness unless you get back to the divine, connected with source and God energy. So a big lesson for us, Scorpio risings. Now the new moon, a total solar eclipse, is happening in our sixth house. And so we are having a lot of shifts right now around our physical health routines and well-being. And how are we sabotaging ourselves? That is the big question right now. Where have we fallen off track with our diet, with our supplements, with our doctor's appointments, with our physical routines? And how do we need to bring them back into our life? And they're kind of being forced at us. So honor your health, nurture your health, work on your nervous system. This is kind of the main background theme lesson of our ruling planet being in Pisces. So honor that as we get through that eclipse. Now, when we get to the lottery aspect, this is blessing, prosperity, unexpected breakthroughs, shifts, people coming out of left field that you can form a long-term bond or connection with. If you are single, you are the rising sign of the zodiac that is most likely to find your marriage partner, to find your long-term partner. If you are hoping to collaborate or form a business connection with someone, this is your chance this month, Scorpio Risings. And if you are already in long-term partnerships, there might be a beautiful unexpected surprise that your lover, your partner shows up with. So pay attention at this time. It is a beautiful energy. The sun will be moving through your relationship sector. So it's going to be a beautiful month after the 19th of April into May for you to focus some attention, energy, heat, and vitality on your relationship sector of life. And I feel you, my Scorpio risings. Let me know in the comments below how you're doing with your health. I've been scheduling so many doctor's appointments. I feel like I'm 80 years old, but it's things that I've been putting on the back burner that the eclipses are bringing back up that Chiron and Aries is bringing up and this Mercury retrograde is forcing me to talk about, think about, ask questions, research, and go over all of that. So let me know how you're doing my Scorpio risings. Let me know if you like the channeled messages along with the astrology. Sagittarius risings, you are ruled by Jupiter. What an exciting month for you with the lottery aspect happening. Your ruling planet being in this beautiful conjunction happens once every 13 years, impacting you the most heavily. Because remember, Jupiter is always trying to teach us lessons and for you, the lesson is to expand, to be optimistic, to see life as an adventure. This is an amazing energy for you, Sagittarius Risings. The message that I'm getting for you, the channeled message that keeps, keeps coming forward, is to push yourself a little bit further out of your discomfort. Now, you're one that's willing to just say yes to everything, but there's those little things that you kind of have a set perspective on, a set mindset on, that you're like, I would never do that, or that doesn't sound like fun. I challenge you to do the unknown or the unthinkable in a healthy way, in a safe way, but that thing could lead to an intense breakthrough in a way that you've never experienced before that can really change your life. So if it's a country you weren't ever wanting to travel to, there could be some major shift that happens for you there, some opportunity that shows up. Um, I'm really thinking for you, learning about a different culture, picking up a book on a topic that you've never read before, finding a mentor, finding an expert or a guru in something that you want to experience in your life moving forward. These are all going to be amazing ways for you to embrace and embody the energy of April. Now let's go back to the new moon total solar eclipse. This is happening in your fifth house. So big, big energy for you because right now you are eclipsing in and out of your life things that don't bring you joy. You are really being challenged right now to have some more fun. This goes back to my channeled message, right, of what brings you joy, what hobbies, what activities, how can you get out of your comfort zone, where do you need to go and explore and adventure and who in your life, bringing it back to relationships, can do these things with you. It is going to be so important for you, Sagittarius Rising, throughout your entire life to be in a long-term partnership that brings fun, excitement, and adventure along with it. Otherwise, you're not going to want to go with them very far. It's going to burn out. It's going to fizzle. So finding those people you can have fun with this month is going to be monumental. And then remembering the lottery aspect with your ruling planet Jupiter happening in your sixth house. This is beautiful energy around 
work life, your health life. Um, there could be an unexpected person that comes into your life that really um, helps you navigate your day to day. It could be maybe you're looking for a doctor that is going to help you with your health. Maybe you're looking for a new therapist. Maybe you're looking for an employee that you're trying to hire. Maybe you're trying to change departments at work. And there's you know someone in the other department that you go to and talk to and they say, oh yeah, I can get you in over here. So look at relationships in your life that can impact you day to day and help with your health or work life. And it can bless you in so many ways, but get out of your comfort zone. And let me know in the comments below what's going on in your life around this time. Please come back after the lottery aspect. Let me know what unexpected surprise came your way in the month of April. Capricorn Risings, your ruling planet is Saturn. This makes you serious. This makes you very responsible at a young age. And Saturn is always teaching us lessons. So for you, you're always trying to overcome an obstacle. You're always trying to grow and mature and do the right thing. And this month, it is no different because the energy of Saturn is really helping us understand how we're going to move forward with all the twists and turns on the roller coaster, with the eclipses, with the lottery aspect, with everything we talked about in today's video. Mars, how we move forward, is being cross-checked by your ruling planet. And so Saturn is saying, have faith. Have a strong foundation in your spiritual practices. So my Capricorn Risings, are you journaling? Are you meditating? Are you praying? Do you have a ritual that you do every day? When you lose faith, where, where do you find it? How do you go back to it? These are very important things for you to learn at this time. And remember, Saturn is in your third house now until 2026. So there's a lot of learning that you're doing right now. You're changing your mindset. You're learning probably about spirituality, about astrology, about crystals. You're learning about meditation practices. You're learning about different ways of thinking and different forms of consciousness. Like you're kind of in the ethers right now with your mindset. And this month you're really diving in deeper into that energy. Now the new moon total solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house. So this is big energy for you because this is impacting your home life. You could have an eclipse of your life in your home. You might change homes, move homes. You might have being kicked out of your home. You might decide with your family that you want to have certain family members live with you or not live with you. There's a lot of shifts around the home and family life this month for you and a lot of healing that might be done. I really encourage you, and this is the channeled message that's coming in um, for you, is with Chiron and Mercury retrograde in your area of home and family ancestry work, healing ancestral wounds, going back and talking to your parents about the trauma that they endured or things in their life that happened when they were a child or talking to your grandparents about the life that they grew up in. There's a lot of ancestral healing that you're being called to do around this month that's going to lift weights off your DNA, off your genetic code that's going to allow you to expand and grow and move forward in life in big, big, bold ways. This is just the message I'm hearing for you. So work with that. You're good at being responsible and doing hard things. I'm going to challenge you to go a little bit deeper into your lineage and healing familial and trauma bonds around that. Now, remember the lottery aspect is happening in your fifth house. So this is amazing because the fifth house is like romance and fun and play and your inner child, it rules your children. So this unexpected breakthrough, twist, turn, feeling like you're hitting the lottery um, on April 20th with Uranus and Jupiter coming conjunct is going to be so welcome for you as someone who's a very Saturnian responsible person to be blessed, to be rewarded uh, unexpectedly is amazing. Your children could have an amazing announcement around this time. You might go on a date with someone that you didn't see coming. Uh, someone comes into your life. Um, you're not single anymore by the end of this month. You have a creative passion project that you're trying to launch, a download that comes in, and you just have this million dollar idea with how you want to create something beautiful energy for you Capricorn rising. So pay attention. Let me know in the comments below if this resonated. Please come back and let me know what unexpected um, lottery happened in your life. And also let me know if you are going to do something about this ancestral wound that you need to heal. Um, if you need any advice, let me know in the comments below. It's something I've been working on. And especially now that Pluto is in my fourth house for the next 20 years, I know this is going to come up for me too. Aquarius risings, your ruling planet is Saturn and Uranus. So we got to look at what both those planets are up to this month because they're really trying to teach you some lessons. Saturn being in Pisces, this is a lesson you already started last March and it's going until 2026. So you are really learning to tap back into Saturn, have strong foundations, discipline, commitment, and routines around your spiritual health, your overall well-being. And this is very important for you to look at how you are sabotaging yourself, um, mindset, limiting beliefs, the stories you're telling 
telling yourself, and I want you to really focus on your tendency to escape life and reality when things get uncomfortable and escaping through drugs, alcohol, addictions. Big, big lesson for you this month because there's a lot of energy coming in that is going to be challenging, that is going to come up and be hard for you. And I don't want you to miss the Saturn lesson as your ruling planet. Now, Uranus, your other planet, your other life coach, is having this amazing lottery aspect conjunction. This can be absolutely beautiful for you. It's going to impact you more because you're used to breakthroughs and being a rebel and changing and moving into the future. You're okay with this energy. So you're working with it. You're anticipating. You find excitement in it. Where other rising signs. They don't like change. Even if the change is like a job opportunity, but if they have to move away from their comfort zone to have the job, they don't find it exciting. You, you're like, hell yeah, let's go. What's next? So you're really going to be able to work with this lottery aspect better than other rising signs. So remembering, let's go back to the new moon total solar eclipse. It is happening in your third house. So you're really eclipsing in and out right now. A lot of information. Maybe there's a thought process or something you've learned a lot in your life. And you're realizing that information no longer applies. Maybe you went to school to be a doctor and you were like, oh my gosh, I'm like the best doctor. I know all this stuff. I've done all these studies. I've done my doctorate. And now you're realizing that all the science and the data isn't real, isn't true. The data points don't match up moving into the future. And now you're having to go back to the drawing board, learn a new way, restudy the science and have a different perspective. So right now there's a lot of mental stuff, especially with Mercury retrograding through your house of mentality and knowledge. Um, so you are having to relearn, reprogram, recommit communicate, re-understand some things in your life that you thought were pretty sure things. Um, so honor that and allow that and be very open-minded. You're good at this Aquarius risings. Now, the lottery aspect for you is happening in your fourth house. So there might be some unexpected twist or turn that comes in your life around your home. This might be a beautiful new family member that shows up. Someone gets married, gets engaged, a new baby. This could be literally like finding the money to put on a down payment on a home, um, an opportunity that comes out of a nowhere, like literally out of nowhere. If you're trying to buy property, if you've desired it, but haven't even looked into it, could just kind of land in your lap, like beautiful, beautiful things when it comes to home and family with this lottery aspect, you're willing to take it. You're willing to move. You're willing to change it up. Um, so honor this energy. Please let me know in the comments below how this pans out for you. How are you feeling moving into April with all this volatile energy? My Pisces risings, this is a big month for you because your ruling planet is Jupiter with the lottery aspect, bringing some blessing and prosperity. You're the one who has faith most of the time. You're the one that is optimistic. You're the one that is open to receiving. And this month, you really are going to be able to absorb that and take in the goodness as your ruling planet Jupiter runs into Uranus, something that happens once every 13 years. And also your other ruling planet, your co-ruler is Neptune. We love this energy because Neptune is in such a perfect spot in the sky. He is in forward direct motion in your first house of Pisces, his home sign in full power in the final degrees, hanging out here for just another couple years. So a really beautiful energy for you in the month of April. Now there is going to be a lot of twists and turns. So let's get into that. We have the new moon total solar eclipse happening in your money sector. Mercury retrograding here is mind on my money, rebudgeting, restructuring, reanalyzing what you're spending, what you value. Like you're thinking about your material possessions. You're thinking about your budget. You're thinking about how much money is coming in. You might be thinking of starting a side hustle. There is so much going on right now mentally with you and your money. This is going to impact the relationships in your life, all relationships, because they are all going to be assessed based on how they help you financially or if they hurt you financially and really saying, hey, if you're draining my funds, if I'm overspending on you, you got to go. It's not worth it for me. Right now, you're going to reprioritize your needs, your wants, your desires when it comes to what you earn and what you spend in a way that you you haven't done in a very long time. And the eclipse might be eclipsing in a new job opportunity for you, a new way of making money, an unexpected source. Um, maybe it's in a material possession, an asset, a resource. Something might come to you, the eclipse into your life um, that you get to work with for the next six months. Now, remember the lottery aspect as the sun moves into Taurus and Uranus and Jupiter move together on April 20th in your third house. This is information, a download, a lottery aspect that changes your life, that changes your future through a conversation 
through learning something. You open up a YouTube video and the first video that pops up is on learning something that helps change your life, that brings in more money, that brings in more income. You walk down the street and you have a conversation with someone who's a mentor in the industry that you want to go into and this helps you with your money. You might meet a CPA or a financial advisor that helps you do your taxes. Maybe you're behind on your taxes. That could be something that's going on. Maybe taxes aren't going very easy for you, Pisces Risings, this month. And so looking for people that can help you with your money, that can help you structure your budget, that can help you lead to financial prosperity. These are all amazing things that may happen for you in the month. So let me know, Pisces Risings, where are you at with your money? And your channeled message is to really honor this space in your life that makes you uncomfortable. Money for you does not feel comfortable. It is something that maybe right now you want to avoid. It's hard. It doesn't have a lot of structure around it. And so this month you're being forced to kind of get your ducks in a row and to truly prioritize what you want to buy and how you want to make money that serves you first um, and changing some things around that. So I'm going to encourage you to Step in your main character. Do what feels right for you. You're good at trusting your intuition. Um, you're going to be challenged to do that this month. So let me know in the comments below where you're at.